Welcome, my beautiful people, to another episode of Dino Basics, where we dig up the basics and solve our favorite deceased beasts. When I started this channel in July, I was expecting to get 500 views in the year as a whole. The fact that we have already hit 500 subscribers in that time is truly incredible. I could not be more thankful for everything you guys do, from your kind words, your constructive suggestions, to simply the time out of your day to hear me ramble about dead stuff. So, for this momentous occasion, another dead thing. Thank you for everyone's votes on today's topic, the Jurassic Lion, Allosaurus. Much like many of the dinosaurs we have covered before, the history of Allosaurus is confusing. The earliest fossil of Allosaurus was excavated in the modern-day United States, specifically the Morrison Formation, located in the state of Colorado. Locals uncovered the fossil in 1869, unsure what the fossil even was, with some believing them to be petrified horse hooves. Geologist Ferdinand van de Veer Hayden would then acquire these specimens and, for a more professional appraisal, Hayden would send the hooves to paleontologist Joseph Leedy, who determined them not to be horse feet, but instead the vertebrae of a tailbone. Leedy would assign this bone to an existing genus of dinosaur, the European theropod Pochilla pleuron. However, a year later in 1870, Leedy would instead assign the fossil to a new genus named Antrodemus. The first remains assigned to the name Allosaurus would not be uncovered until 1877, also discovered in the previously mentioned Morrison Formation. This fossil included various bone fragments of ribs, vertebrae, and teeth, as well as an assortment of other bones. Paleontologist Othniel Charles Marsh would assign these bones to the new genus and species named Allosaurus fragilis but would not be the only dinosaur discovered in the area. During this time, Marsh and fellow paleontologist Edward Drinker Cope were in a bit of a <clears throat> pelvis estimation contest for who could identify the most new genus of dinosaur, commonly referred to today as the Bone Wars or the Great Dinosaur Rush, which occurred between the 1870s and the 1890s. For this reason, many dinosaurs declared during this time were named with lacking specimens or based on specimens of existing dinosaurs. For Allosaurus alone, dinosaurs like Creosaurus, Labrosaurus, and Epentarius were all declared during this time period. This influx of names would cause confusion in the paleontological community. To put this into perspective, by 1920, Five dinosaur genera existed for a single dinosaur. This confusion would be cleared by Charles W. Gilmore in 1920, who noticed the similarities between Allosaurus and a previously named dinosaur, the aforementioned Antrodemus. Gilmore would declare the two genera one in the same, and reassign the specimens of Allosaurus into Antrodemus, due to Antrodemus having seniority being named first. Other names, like Creosaurus, would also be declared nomen dubium, or non-existent, as time went on. Over the next 40 years, very little would happen for the genus, until 1960, when major operations at a little-known quarry would shake up our understanding of this dinosaur. The Cleveland Lloyd Dinosaur Quarry in the modern state of Utah would become the richest collection of Allosaurus fossils in history, with an estimated 46 of the total 73 dinosaurs with remains in the quarry belonging to Allosaurus. This wealth of specimens would lead paleontologist James Henry Madsen to argue against the use of Antrodemus noting the lack of complete fossils assigned to the genus. Instead, Madsen would declare Allosaurus as the proper genus for all fossils. And the number of fossils was extensive, 
A variety of ages and sizes for Allosaurus were discovered in this quarry, helping Allosaurus to become one of the most well-researched and studied theropods in history. This new array of specimens would bring about a renaissance for the genus, leading into extensive research into how Allosaurus would have grown, hunted, and raised their young. Even newer specimens further increased our understanding, such as the discovery of Allosaurus fossils in Portugal, increasing the range of where Allosaurus could have lived, and most significantly, arguably, would be the discovery of the Big Al specimen, a nearly 95% complete specimen of Allosaurus, discovered by Swiss paleontologist Kirby Cyber in 1991. To this day, Big Al is one of the most complete dinosaur fossils to ever be discovered, with even the cause of death being identified as being an infection in the legs. The name Allosaurus can be translated to Latin, stemming from the Latin words allos for strange or different and soros for lizard, translating to strange lizard. This name references its original vertebrae fossils, which at the time were considered unique. Their concave, almost hourglass shape was a rarely seen feature among other dinosaurs, but since then have been discovered in some other genus. As of today, six species of Allosaurus have been named. However, a new study written by Daniel Schur and Mark Lowen in 2020 only recognized three, these being Allosaurus fragilis, Allosaurus europaeus, and the newest, Allosaurus gemadseni. For simplicity, and because I really don't want to have to write six different descriptions, we will focus on these three. For the most part, all three species are fairly similar in size, skeletal makeup, and when they lived. Fragilis is technically the most frequent, with 60 specimens assigned to it, but this is not necessarily reflective of their numbers when they were alive. The name stems once again from Latin, meaning fragile, referencing the airy vertebrae of Allosaurus, which in comparison to other vertebrae would be considerably more fragile. Fragilis is considered the type species of Allosaurus, and thus other species are compared to this dinosaur. This species was believed to have roamed throughout the central and western parts of the United States. The second species, Europaeus, stems from Portuguese and translates to European. This species is nearly identical to Fragilis and is most likely additional specimens of Fragilis, but is mostly recognized to classify specimens of Allosaurus discovered in Portugal. The final species, Jamad Seni, was named in honor of Utah paleontologist James H. Madsen Jr., who we have discussed earlier. He was the guy who had it renamed from Antrodemus to Allosaurus. It was named to assign a species to Big Al as well as another fairly complete specimen. Compared to Europaeus, Jamad Seni had a few more differences to Fragilis, one being when they evolved, as Jamad Seni was believed to have evolved at least 5 million years before Fragilis. Another difference was their skull construction, with the construction of Jamad Seni being more lightly built than its later relative, suggesting a different feeding behavior between the two species. Allosaurus was a saurischian, or lizard-hipped, dinosaur, and more specifically, a theropod. Theropods were a largely carnivorous group, but later evolved into some herbivorous and omnivorous dinosaurs, most distinctly recognized for their hollow bones and three-toed limbs. Even more specifically, Allosaurus is the namesake of their own family of dinosaurs called the Allosauridae, a small family of dinosaurs that lived throughout the late Jurassic period, almost 160 million years ago. Other than Allosaurus, the only other non nomend uh, other not nomend uh, real dinosaur is Sorophaganax, 
And even this dinosaur has been proposed as another Allosaurus. As for Allosaurus itself, the type species of Fragilis would have been nearly 28 feet or 8.5 meters in length and nearly 16 feet or 5 meters in height, although some estimates place them at almost 32 feet or 9 meters in length. Weight similarly varies, but usually ranges between 2 to 3 tons. The skull of Allosaurus would have measured almost 3 feet or a meter in length, sporting powerful jaws lined with serrated saw-like teeth, each measuring between 2 to 4 inches, or 50 to 100 millimeters in length. These teeth would shed easily as the animal aged or they were dulled down, making Allosaurus teeth a common fossil found in their environments. The iconic horns of Allosaurus were just above their eyes, consisting of a small, fragile bone from the skull called a lacrimal bone, and most likely covered in a keratin sheath. Their fragile composition and small size make them unlikely for combat. More likely explanations suggest display purposes to attract mates and intimidate rivals, or serve as shade for their eyes during the day although they could just use fossil sunglasses. Eh? Eh? Oh, tough crowd. Analysis of the skull indicated Allosaurus would have had well-developed sinus glands, most likely a useful tool in hunting prey. The namesake vertebrae of Allosaurus, with their hourglass shape and hollow spaces, was considered unique to the genus. However, over the following years, this vertebrae shape has been observed in other dinosaurs, such as other theropods of the time, and even the massive sauropod group of dinosaurs. This odd shaping would have made their skeletons lighter, helping the dinosaur reach higher running speeds and to compensate for its large body. The body of Allosaurus was fairly bulky, thanks largely to its broad ribcage. Its body would have sported powerful forelimbs, which, while short compared to the rest of its body, were well-developed compared to later dinosaurs like the Tyrannosaurus. These arms sported three fingers and razor-sharp claws, capable of slashing prey or cutting into carcasses. Its hind limbs were long and powerful, ending with three-toed feet armed with long, sharp claws. These legs were excellent for running, helping Allosaurus reach speeds of up to 20 miles per hour. Ending its body was its long, heavy tail, meant to counterbalance the rest of its body. Allosaurus lived during the late Jurassic, nearly 160 million years ago. It largely would have resided in areas throughout the western United States, including states like Colorado and Utah although some fossils have been found in other areas, such as Portugal. Focusing on their primary environment, the western United States during this time would have been a fairly semi-arid environment, contending with difficult dry seasons and lush wet seasons. The landscape would be largely flat, divided by long flowing rivers as well as rich forests. Allosaurus was believed to be the largest and apex predator of its environment, outsizing other carnivores like the Ceratosaurus and Ornitholestes. However, some argue that fellow theropod Torvosaurus was actually bigger and could have contested Allosaurus as the apex predator of the time. To explain this, paleontologists believe the three largest predators Allosaurus, Torvosaurus, and Ceratosaurus each filled their own environmental niche. Where the long legs of Allosaurus saw them prefer open plains, the specialized jaws of Ceratosaurus favor waterside or river hunting, while the lower and thin body of Torvosaurus would be ideal for forest and underbrush hunting. Although there is also fossil evidence of occasional confrontations and shared predation between the three. Despite this understanding, how Allosaurus would have hunted is not as well understood. The most obvious method would be to simply overwhelm their prey 
like modern lions would hunt zebras. However, when comparing the size of Allosaurus to some sauropods of the time, this becomes much less feasible. Similarly, an analysis of Allosaurus skulls found that while the skulls of Allosaurus were excellent for resisting stress, their bite force was not nearly strong enough to bite through the bone and kill, unlike other theropods like the Tyrannosaurus. So, a variety of alternatives have been suggested. The bite force analysis suggested Allosaurus would have instead used their jaws like a machete, rapidly slashing into prey to weaken their targets and make them easier to kill. Another method called flesh grazing was suggested, where Allosaurus would simply cut chunks out of living dinosaurs, allowing the animal to run away and live, while Allosaurus would feast on what is stolen from their bodies. A 2013 study by Eric Snively and his team would conclude that an earlier theory proposed by paleontologist Robert Backer was more likely, where rather than delivering long slashes or a single powerful bite, Allosaurus would deliver a succession of rapid, short bites to cut into the flesh of prey and cause extensive bleeding. The saw-like teeth would support this, allowing Allosaurus to easily cut through flesh and deliver maximum damage, while their specialized neck muscles permitted quick movements to bite again. Another point of confusion was their social behavior. While cooperation has been observed in other theropod dinosaurs, like Tyrannosaurus, there is very little evidence Allosaurus would have cooperated with others of their own kind. If anything, the opposite seems more likely. Comparisons are made to modern carnivores like crocodiles, lizards, and birds, where individuals may begrudgingly cooperate to kill larger prey or hunt in massive groups. However, this teamwork was by no means amiable. Carnivores would attack or even kill their own kind for encroaching on their territory or simply eating before others do. Cannibalism is very likely among Allosaurus, due to teeth bones being found in the rib cages of others, as well as bite and slash marks matching Allosaurus being found on the head and shoulders of certain specimens. And for those remembering the large number of specimens found in the Cleveland Lloyd Quarry, first off, good callback, but this is unlikely to occur due to some family unit or cooperation. Instead, Backer argues this is more likely a feeding frenzy, where Allosaurus gathered to hunt the weakened or dead, only for themselves to die in the process. Allosaurus is probably one of the most famous theropods to ever live rivaling other dinosaurs like Velociraptor and Tyrannosaurus rex in prominence. Due to their quantity in the Cleveland Lloyd Quarry, Allosaurus is recognized as the state fossil of Utah. In terms of pop culture relevance, Allosaurus has spanned across time and medium, being featured in some of the earliest films and movies, and appearing in modern documentaries and franchises. Some of its largest roles include its appearance in the 1999 documentary, Walking with Dinosaurs, where Allosaurus would appear in the episode, Time of Titans, as a recurring antagonist to the Diplodocus, the species this episode primarily focused on. While not the earliest appearance for this beast, this role would help Allosaurus become a household name and introduce many to this dinosaur for the first time. Due to its acquired fame, and most likely because they had already programmed the model, Allosaurus would return in a 2000 special for Walking with Dinosaurs called The Ballad of Big Al, which sought to tell the life story of the famous specimen. Allosaurus has also made appearances in the Jurassic Park franchise, making a small appearance in the 2018 movie Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom, as well as its 2022 sequel. Jurassic World Dominion. However, Allosaurus would also serve as the primary antagonist in the 2019 special Battle at Big Rock, which is actually free to watch on YouTube, and you should totally watch if you haven't. And these are just its biggest roles. 
To get across how popular this dinosaur is, let's speed through just a few. <sighs> 1925 film The Lost World, 1966 film One Million BC, 1969 film The Valley of Guanji, 1974 TV show Land of the Lost as Alice, Weird Anime Thing, Dinosaur Expedition Born Free, 1987 animated show Dino Saucers, 1998 film The Land Before Time 6, The Secret of Saurus Rock, 2000 video game Dino Crisis 2, 2001 documentary When Dinosaurs Roamed America, 2001 TV show The Lost World, 2003 video game Jurassic Park Operation Genesis, 2007 television series The Land Before Time, 2008 TV show Jurassic Fight Club 2009 film Land of the Lost once again is Alice 2011 documentary Dinosaur Revolution 2018 video game Jurassic World Evolution 2020 video game Path of Titans and 2023 documentary Life on Our Planet as well as the classic meme Allosaurus had never seen such bull before and I left out a lot there few dinosaurs can compare to the terror and awe instilled by Allosaurus its storied history formidable appearance, and deadly reputation make it a standout species in the grand pantheon of dinosaurs. For those who would downplay such a menacing beast, allo me to state otherwise. That's gonna do it for this episode. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed. Be sure to leave a comment below what you think of Allosaurus and if you've heard of this dinosaur before the video. To those listening to the end, once again, you guys are truly amazing, and I could not ask for a more committed and wonderful community. I hope to do plenty more specials as we continue to grow. But looking only to this Friday, we'll be looking at the basics for the tiny toothless menace, Lemusaurus. Thank you for your support, and see you in the next video.